Hello and welcome to the final artist talk in our series for the Kanoiwak Ashabak Memorial Award shortlisted artists. My name is Heather Campbell. I'm the Strategic Initiatives Director at the Inuit Art Foundation. I'm originally from Rigolat, Nunatsiavut, and I currently live in Northwest River, Newfoundland, Labrador. And although we are all joining remotely from across North America today, I would like to acknowledge the land on which the Inuit Art Foundation is currently located. It is on the ancestral and traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat, the original owners and custodians of this land. Today, this place is home to many, including a diverse urban indigenous community of Inuit First Nations and Métis. On May 19, 2023, the Inuit Art Foundation announced the shortlisted artists for the Kanoiwak Ashavak Memorial Award in conjunction with the opening of uh, Ananata Unikangi, Our Mother's Stories. So that was the exhibition, uh, a group exhibition at the Winnipeg Art Gallery, uh, Weg Kamayuk, which runs until November. So this is the first year that the CAMA includes a special exhibition for the shortlist, thanks to the exceptional support of RBC Emerging Artists. In addition to this exhibition, each artist shortlisted for the award receives a $5,000 cash prize. So this afternoon, we're having the pleasure of hearing Takalik Partridge in conversation with shortlisted artist Ningniukluk TV. So Takalik Partridge is an Inuk artist, curator, and poet originally from Kujuak, Nunavik, Quebec. She's currently the Associate Curator of Indigenous Art with Inuit Art Focus at the Art Gallery of Ontario. Before joining the AGO in 2022, she served as Director of the Nordic Lab at Gallery Saw Gallery and Adjunct Curator at the Art Gallery of Guelph. That's a mouthful, <laughs> Takalik. Uh, she has also worked as communications director for Abatak Cultural Institute and editor at large for the Inuit Art Quarterly. And Ningyokuluk TV shares her unique perspective on historical and contemporary Inuit culture through both her visual art and writing. In particular, her ability to capture and distill stories into drawings and prints is what makes TV's work so popular. She is noted for her frequent and playful translation of traditional stories into dynamic compositions. So welcome at Tungasugi to Ningyukluk and Takalik. Nakomi. Nakomi Heather. So I'm so happy to be here today with you. Ningyukluk. First of all, I just wanted to say congratulations for being shortlisted for this award. Very important um, artist that it, the award honors. And I wonder um, what does Kenoya Azwak mean to you? What does her work mean to you and her legacy? Uh, uh. Kind of hard to put into words. Um, she is just a legend uh, that the whole world knows about. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, King Amir are lucky to know to have known her. You know, live with her in the same community. Um, Mm -hmm. Because it's so, it, she's such an important figure in Inuit art and in art in general, right? Yes. Uh, yes, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and such an inspiration for sure do you feel that you're kind of following in her footsteps uh, barely <laughs> barely <laughs> yeah um, 
Your last is, <clears throat> I think more than, more than I could ever be for sure. Uh, she's, I don't know, lived a different life. Uh, so, kind of connecto. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> so if you would win this award, like, what would, how would you feel? I'm wondering. <laughs> I can't even. I don't know. I don't think I want to talk about that. Uh, okay, yeah. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but it would uh, be awesome. And it will be awesome for whoever wins. <gasps> mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in good company. It's been so fun to talk to all the artists for, and feel so, I feel so lucky that I had a chance to talk to all of you. And you last, my friend, who I just saw yeah. in Toronto. So you yeah. were in Toronto with your husband and you came uh, to do a talk about your work at Art Gallery of Ontario. And it was yeah. very nice and we had your work up. Um, Maybe if you could share, when did you start doing art and how did you start? Who um, who encouraged you to start doing artwork? Um, I don't think I received any kind of encouragement. It's yeah, it's like my grand my grandfather was a carver. Uh, and that like my my father he was um uh, he did a bit of drawing and watercolors and um I was just uh nuisance using up all his paper <laughs> so, uh, but um you know I did Doodling, it came from doodling. Um, you know, meetings are boring, so I doodled a lot. And that's where uh, a principal took note and um, asked me if I wanted to do an illustration for a children's book. That's, I think it really kind of started there. Mm -hmm. And what year was that? Um, late, late eighties. Yeah, or mid eighties. There. Yeah. So you were very young. Just started doodling, and then you got encouraged to do illustrations. One of the things you're famous for is your book Aligu. Can we show a picture yeah. of that? So whenever, if if anybody searches your name, one of the things it says, author. So you're known also as an author and an artist. What was this book? I think this was your first book, right? Um, maybe second. <laughs> second, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. This one is... Uh, you know, just a memory from growing up around here when everything was clean or cleaner. Uh, it's, I don't know. We live in a, we're, we're, we live on an island where, where before people moved here, there were animals, all kinds of birds and, uh, you know, what do you call it? Didn't that mute A mumaji. Yeah, in in the low tide, animals in the low tide. Yeah. 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 So, so it's about um, my grandmother taking us along um, to go to Malik Island or near it. Uh, My, my say on this um, Alego 
uh, single child actually was was my grandmother and my uncle, but I wasn't so confident in uh, drawing, putting in more people, you know. Mm. I guess my thought was they're not going to look the same, like the same person on it, on a, another page or the next page. So, so my uncle is missing from that story. But he was a part of it. Um, it's about the things I saw for the very first time, or maybe taking notice of uh, everything around me and remembering it. As I've never seen a, a moment of, in its, uh, I've seen it on dishes, but not in the ground. Yeah. Near water. <laughs> And so you were digging, you were digging yeah. clams when you were small. Um, tried to dig, mm -hmm. uh, but they they were faster than me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember catching any. Mm. And do are you able to still do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's I need more to go up to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. When you um, started doing more freehand artwork, what kind of inspired you to do that? I don't recall what year, <clears throat> but I think it was before, uh, before the 2000s. Um, it was really like, a, a, I don't know, accident to Lucky. I heard Jimmy Manning go on the local radio, inviting members of the community to give it a shot, you know. So it started from there, um, drawing for the club. And so you would draw in the club studio? Mm, not really, no. Uh, at home? Uh, at home, because um, it was, I was really shy, still um, a little bit. Mm. Uh, hard to draw with or concentrate with people around. Mm. So then when you're drawing, what kinds of things are you thinking about? I never paid attention to that. <laughs> and I don't know. I think um I think I've uh, grown a bit. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's not such a problem anymore if I make an accident or what I think is a mistake. It's I can actually improvise on it now. So, um, what I, I usually think uh, in my mind, how do I want that image to look like? And sometimes it works. Uh, I think about what do I want to draw? And like, what do I want to draw? What? Do I want other people to see um, how I see things? And, um, mm -hmm. and do you listen to music or do you like it to be quiet or listen to Tuzautik mm -hmm. or? I like it to be quiet, but I like to listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
what's your favorite um, kind of paper and writing or drawing tools to use? I like uh, the black paper or, you know, trying color, color, different color papers. Ilanico, uh, I like to use um, acrylic paints, but usually most of the time I use colored pencils. Mm. Um, can we look at Bed of Kelp, Danielle? Thank you. So this one is a print, right? Yeah. Can you tell how it started? If I can remember correctly. Uh, I know. Uh, we, I was remembering uh, how I, we went on a canoe outing and uh, the water was shallow just before we uh, do luck land. Um, and I see all this bed of kelp, you know, like movement. In um, up. So that's what I tried to yeah. show there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you do you pick them and eat them? Gondon? Not this kind. <laughs> Not that kind, huh? The the long one they might just going up the sides. Yeah, I like the long yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. But not but they're kind of jigging they're different. Yeah. These are called echotics. <laughs> uh are you gonna translate that to you? Like um <laughs> or the paper or <laughs> but with <laughs> Yeah, we call it hooty. Uh as so. <laughs> um they're still beautiful. <laughs> it's very beautiful. But I don't think they're used really for that. They're just called that as so. Yeah. Um, I really love your both your the shapes and the movement in your work. I love the fact that you use both the positive space and the negative space. And your sense of color is just so great. Like uh, in that show at Art Gallery of Ontario, we were talking about that one, the owl with all the stories. Yeah. And just like things in all different colors and like you put so much meaning into one image you kind of make it look almost simple, but then it seems like there's all these different parts of meaning. Is that something that you just do, like it just happens or you really, really think about it to try to make sure that you include everything that you want? You know, it's, sometimes it comes in different ways. You know? uh, Sometimes it comes so easy, effortlessly, you know, it just, or an idea just pops up, but sometimes it takes a long time just staring at the paper. So, uh, yeah, I'm using up all the stories and myths, the same ones over and over again. <laughs> But I find that every time you retell something, it's a new way to look at it. That's the thing that so keeps your work just fresh all the time because you have a new, oh, this way, here's another way to look at it. Oh, here's another way. Yes. yes. When you, um, like if you're out walking or out by boat or just um, doing something else like washing dishes or whatever, do you sometimes just suddenly think of a of a drawing or um, an image that you want to do? Mm, that's kind of crazy you bring that up because um, um, 
Then I try hard, like doing something, being in the middle of something, and and that an idea just pops up, and um, no wonder people use those uh, sketchbooks. But <laughs> imagine that with um, dishwater hands and a sketchbook. <laughs> so I try hard not to forget uh, what I'm. Sometimes I'm not so lucky. Mm. What about dreams? Have you ever had a dream about a drawing and then do the drawing? Not yet. No. I don't think so. Mm. Or like your kids or ducks, did they ever say, can you draw this? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, my, my youngest granddaughter, uh, she was uh, she came over and I'm looking at this piece of white paper with uh, just a uh, uh, border started on it and she looks at it and asks me is that Spongebob? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Spongebob hmm. Squarepants you know that guy? Um, do you think that she wants to like does any of your family do they you think they want to do what you do like do drawing do do artwork um, my grandson wants to do that um, mm -hmm. but he wants to be able to draw like I do uh, <clears throat> maybe he will yeah We talked about this before. You draw a lot of owls. Um, yeah. In a way, I feel like they are you or like a part of you. My favorite subject. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. What do they mean in your life, owls? <clears throat> um. Uh, to they're just um, not just they're the stories that Mila Jara, <clears throat> the late Mila Jara, would tell when she came to our school, and they're just fun. Like <laughs> I know the owl and the raven could have been painted in so many different ways or with a different color. Mm -hmm. That's just my imagination, you know, that's um, mm. what kind like what what if you see an Ukpik in the wild or whatever? How does, do you have a reaction? Um, I've seen one in one in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was very far away. I have never seen one up close. Mm. Uh, I've seen it from a distance that one time. And um, they're strange, like they have no neck. When you see it from far, <laughs> like it's like it's missing a head or something. Mm. Like they're uh, amazing, I think. Mm -hmm. Like um, there's that crazy one, the owl with the eyes that are like, kind of like spiraling. And then there's yeah. some that are kind of like bratty <laughs> and some that are like kind of very feminine. And this one here, he's like, is he blinking? The one on the bottom of this picture? Yeah, yeah that's how they blink. Uh, yeah. It's not winking, it's blinking. Uh -huh. you know, that's the way they blink. And then the one in the middle, his texture is a little bit like nutsuk. Uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah. 
I didn't want to, that time I didn't want to uh, make them all look the same. Yeah. So I just used that imagination, you know, if he could have been painted differently. Yeah. <clears throat> So if he's almost like, so it's like that it can be kind of anything like, mm. again, you're looking at the story or the character in so many different ways. And each time you look at it a new way. Mm. Mm. So walrus is another one that you draw quite a bit. Something that I really love is like, your artwork can be very serious and very smart, of course, but also cute and funny. <laughs> and this uh, is so cute and funny to me <laughs> because of just because it's looking at you with its tiny eyes from its giant body. Mm. Uh, and it has beautiful, beautiful texture on its body. Can you tell a little bit about this one? Um, I don't know. I just was thinking, how can I draw? I want to draw a walrus, but how can I draw one? You know, that can, that's not just sitting or, you know, or swimming. So I thought about that one for a while until, you know, I've never seen one looking at me, uh, you know, facing my way. So I drew that one that way. Uh, and I, I really like doing walruses too. Yeah. I remember you told me that story about the walrus, the, the mountain one. Oh, yes. I should take a picture of it. Hmm. The hill next to the big hill. Yeah. And a shaman who walked up to the hill and turned himself into a walrus. But, uh, but he got stuck up there because he couldn't change back to his human form and couldn't get back down and just became part of that hill. So my mother told me that. Mm -hmm. and, so. and so that one, that artwork, we're not showing it here, but the artwork, the walrus has flowers on him because he's a hill. Yes. And that's just like a very Gingnite story, right? Like that's very specific to your community. Yeah. Yeah. There's two actually. Uh, mm -hmm. The big hill, which is, it's called King at Mountain, is just a big hill. Mm -hmm. And that one has a walrus and a polar bear story about it, too. Oh. Uh, which I learned recently, mm -hmm. just a few years ago. So it looks like when the wind is blowing and, you know, blowing snow, it looks like the... You can actually see the form of a polar bear head and and it looks like it's breathing, blowing snow from its mouth or wow. They make the out. I love those kind of stories. Mm -hmm. you put it down. Do you think that you've always been a person who just really listens to stories? Like, even when you were a kid, like you really love stories? Yeah, all kinds of stories. Uh, like, stories that are uh, turned into movies like The Whale Rider or movies like that. Uh, indigenous stories mm -hmm. are very interesting to watch. Uh, what like at an actor or um, yeah. 
what another thing that about your work is that just with one image you can tell a whole story and for me that um like I know you say you're shy but I feel like your personality is actually very big and your intelligence is just you're so smart you're just like one of the smartest people I know that you can tell a whole story with one picture and I'm every time I see like different work of yours and you're telling the story in a different way I'm like wow she did it again <laughs> <laughs> so like here's an example <laughs> you know of course people when they look at artwork they're like they have their own feelings and their own reactions but I'm wondering if you could tell about this work because it's so like I don't know smart cheeky uh kind of sexy kind of uh powerful um no um in inuit stories there's a lot of uh shapeshifters kind of stories um there's a story about a woman and uh I don't think she was too happy with her spouse. Um, so her husband was out um, with his dog sled. And she saw him, she heard the dog team and she went outside and <clears throat> saw that he was returning. And um, she wanted to turn into a raven um, and she turned into a raven and she flew off to an iceberg where she could see her husband, her spouse, you know, going into the igloo and uh, came right back out because she wasn't there and and he started looking around, but he couldn't find her tracks anywhere. And, but she, and then she flew off. Uh, <clears throat> she found an, another igloo and a, a man. There was a man. Uh, no, she, she observed him and then made the decision to, you know, changed back to a human form and gave herself to that man. Mm -hmm. I don't know the reasons why, maybe she, <laughs> you can speculate. And so this high heel, a raven's foot in a high heel. So uh, I just wanted to depict that. Uh, that's a modern woman today. <laughs> so, yeah. Still a shapeshifter, but modern woman. <laughs> hmm. I think. Hmm. And um, what about the choice of colors? Like, because I know that you're so good with using colors. What, what do you have, like, favorite colors to work with? And do you um, feel that they have different meanings? <clears throat> no, I I like to use colors that pop, uh, that really pop up, uh, like bold colors. Mm. What kinds like of now? Hey, Ati. Hello. No, just continue. I interrupted you. Sorry. And uh, that that's I like using dark or like bright reds and mm -hmm. yellow so um, and I use red a lot with uh with when I'm using black paper. Mm -hmm. Um is there uh, a kind of artwork that you want to do that you haven't done yet? 
Mm, uh, if I could uh, come up with a, give you whole story on one big page or wow, on a wall or something, but um, but I want to hear that story again from beginning to end. That would be something. So you would do that as a drawing? I think a piece of paper is too small. I don't know. Maybe we can try it. Or a really paper. huge mural. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. And have you ever done collaboration with other artists? Mm, uh, a couple of times. When, uh, what was his name, Jordan? When Jordan was here for a while, we did that. I did that a couple of times. And I did one with my son too. Uh, he carved what I drew. Oh, He's the carver. That's wonderful. So what about, have you thought about writing more books or illustrating other books? Uh, I felt that kind of uh, uh, took a lot out of me. Uh, you know, just the thought of, um, if I'm gonna do another book and it's likely it would have people in it, but you know, kind of, I find it kind of hard to uh, make sure that that character's face is the same on every page. They may need to. But I've been really enjoying um, this talk. I was curious if you could tell us a bit more about the piece that you did with uh, Nuliayuk or Sedna, where she's sitting on the rock with the cigarette in her mouth. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember that one. Um, I did that one and then forgot I did that one. <laughs> uh, I said I didn't recognize it, but, uh, but that one was about you know, the pollution that's, that I see everywhere, like not just here. Right? <clears throat> There's that metal dump, you know, and garbage in the water, and because the wind blows it everywhere. When it's <clears throat> and sometimes we're careless, what we throw on the ground. So Sedna is, uh, you know, <clears throat> not just uh, the pollution, it's like she has some sort of addiction too. Uh, just so we're kind of polluted on the earth, in the water, and in our bodies. So, so do you, did you see that, that, the pollution was sort of like infecting her, like sort of poisoning her at the yeah. same time? Yes, that's good, yeah. Oh, okay. I have to tell you, I'm an artist as well. And I did a work about Nuliayu being poisoned by methyl mercury in Labrador. And I was oh. very much inspired by your work. I was thinking of it oh. when I made it. So I really felt like, um, you know, like we have so many things that are very common in all of our regions across Canada. And it's so fun to see how all of us do it just a little bit differently, you know? Mm -hmm. So I love that piece. Thank you for explaining it. I really, really, I really love that work of yours, Heather, too. <laughs> um, 
One of the things that I notice is that uh, your women that you draw are very powerful. Uh, and the way that uh, Inuit women are powerful is um, very uh, Inuk, like Inuit style of being um, in in command, in charge. Um, I, I think it's a self-portrait, the one where you're holding your hair back or kind of combing your hair. Is that a self-portrait? Yeah. I love that. And it's just, it's the back of you. Um, but I can, it just looking at it, it looks like you. To me, it looks like you. And you look beautiful and also very confident. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, do you think about that? Like that you're actually doing um, women in charge of themselves in your work? <clears throat> I have never really thought about that. Um, um, but our women are strong. Kind of be a. Oh, I can never know what you have to want. Kind of me. Or like, if I think about Hinoya, like just doing things and being so talented and just everything flowing out of her pencil and just taking care of her family. I feel like that is kind of the same thing that you do. To me, that's like one of the inspirations that you are is that you do this beautiful work and you take care of your family. Yeah. It's a sacrifice uh, where uh, and I know that I'm kind of gonna, I'm not going to see. <laughs> now that I'm a little bit older, uh, it's been a sacrifice because uh, I have to I have not been able to find the time to do other things that I used to do, like uh, sewing, and uh, mainly sewing. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll find the time someday. But honey, uh, migani, uh, it's okay. Because uh, I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's very, very hard to find time to sew and also like get in the mood. And then once you start, like you can't really stop. That's what I mm, that, Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Well, real. Um, when I was into sewing, I didn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Is there an artist that you would like to work with, that you would like to do a collaboration with? <clears throat> Anybody out there who knows the whole story of Kivyuk? Maybe okay. with a... Maybe with a storyteller and, oh. and not just by myself, like, uh, um, I don't want to name names because I don't know if you'd be uh, comfortable, but he's an awesome storyteller. So, um, I think he's younger than me and he can tell these stories, you know, I yeah uh, in your singing, you're pissing in that of Sassoni, only cavern nectar. None of them meet to me, or okay. Wow. Is there um, anything that you wanted me to ask that I did not ask? Because <laughs> I feel like I'm just asking questions so slowly today. <laughs> uh, Mm. Mm. Um, so Deborah Webster 
Hi, Debra. <laughs> Hello, I'm a huge fan. What is your son's name, the carver? What's your son's name who was an artist? Nilaka Ikilotivi. Ikilotivi. Been carving a long time. Wow. Since he was the kid. Yeah. Hmm. What does he like to carve about? We love what kind of stories. He did uh, polar bears, you know, and now he he can carve um, dogs, like maybe husky dogs, maybe they, but I don't see any husky, husky dogs around here. <laughs> and he, when we did a collaboration, he did, uh, what did I do? I think I drew the... Raven. And then he carved it. Yeah. Oh. Did you ever do collaboration with your father? No, no, I don't. Hmm. Uh, that Lord. would have been embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Lawrence Bernard, when, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, thank you for sharing with us, Ningi Kuluk. I love your work, and I wonder if there is a specific animal you love but struggle to draw, and why? So is there an animal that you love but you it's hard to draw? Sure. Uh... I didn't laugh him before. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, like, there's only a so so many animals in the Arctic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be. I don't know what it will be. You ever try a caribou? You know. You ever try to draw a caribou? The <laughs> the. Animal. Mm. Oh, caribou. I did one and I think I really liked it, but I had to kind of make different changes to it. So yeah, caribou is kind of kind of hard to draw. Mm. But yeah. then I love that one I with the legs. Like with lots yeah. of legs. Huh? Um, yeah, I drew a caribou with a face, human face on it, uh, and it looks kind of was well, unreal. So it doesn't look like a caribou. So that's a hard one to draw. Is that from a story or just from your imagination? Just you know, one of those. If all animals could change shape, maybe a caribou too. I was telling this story recently that we heard this story in culture class when I was a kid. The teacher was telling a story about this man was hunting a tuk tuk for many, many miles and then he finally caught up to it and it turned and it had a human face. Mm. And I was so scared. <laughs> 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 but the way you're describing it, it's more like kind of cute. <laughs> so maybe it's not so scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could be near too. I love that um aspect of Inuit stories where a, a somebody, a being can be they can be a it could be a raven and it could be a human, and it's both and like you kind of don't really need to explain. It's just like that. I find that very interesting about Inuit stories. So like mm -hmm. the raven can have a husband and the raven can wear high heels. And <laughs> um, Alison Hardwick. Hi, Ningikolo. I love your work. If you could try a different medium, what would it be? If you could try a different way of making art. Yeah, I was thinking about that, you know, how, what else can I, 
how else can I? I think it would be something, um, I don't know. Um, not just paper, like material things or metal or rock, or maybe with a camera. I don't know. Um, I feel like you, a, you know what? We're Facebook friends and I've seen your photos just with your phone. You're very good. <laughs> I feel like somebody should get you a camera. <laughs> there was that one photo of you and your husband when you were in Toronto and it was very, it was very creative, really good photo. The, the one I took of him when we stepped out of the uh, Bishop Airport mm -hmm. well, on land. That one, I, I say I really like. Yeah. Uh, I really think you could do it. I like your pictures too. Mm. <laughs> and Allison, who was asking the question, she's a beautiful photographer too. Um, <laughs> anonymous attendee. Not a question, but I am curious if you take requests. I'd love to see more of your interpretation on Northern Lights. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they want to know Northern if you uh, do you do Northern Lights. <clears throat> they go uh, uh me. No, 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 no. That's the one kind of hard to do. Like uh, how how could I know what the story behind it is uh, a kid or a couple of kids are, uh, you know, had made a toy out of a war said uh, kicking it around. How could we make that? Or just I can just just draw one without a story. <clears throat> Something to think about. Thank you for the idea. They're kind of scary, eh? Uh, yeah, they yeah. are. They can chop your head off. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather told me once um, there is a local hunter that didn't come back. And when when he finally came back, they see they had a, he had a cut on his neck. And the man wasn't the same since. And um, my grandfather had his own idea that it might have been the <clears throat> Northern Lights. So mm. I don't know. Mm. And the thing with Northern Lights is uh, when they're out, you have to keep your hood on. Otherwise, you're, you get chopped. Mm -hmm. Scary. Um, Lorianne, Ningyukulu, your work is so amazing, and I love hearing how much you enjoy using the black paper. My favorite of yours is the lithograph, Where She Lives, so magical amongst the seaweed and just the hint of her hand glowing off the black back, black background. P.S. I miss you all and wish I was still a thinking night. <laughs> oh, it's somebody who yeah, hey, Lori, Lori, Lori from our Lori. museum. <laughs> <laughs> Lorian, uh, hi, Lorian. Nakumi, Kangusulipani. Your friends even show up. Uh, mm. Kayula Mor Morwood, is there a story behind the cosmic owl print, the one who is flying and is surrounded by stars? Oh, uh, not a story, just my imagination, you know. What if I took a picture of the owl in a perfect moment, like, like it doesn't have any wings, but just a, you know, a span. Uh, so, I don't know. Mm. Like, 
Yeah, they're like stealthy or yeah. very, very quiet. Yeah. Silent. Because uh, <clears throat> that was one way of uh, kind of me eliminating <laughs> the uh, all the work that that the raven did, nearly. <laughs> Uh, so just a different well it's like a, it's like the opposite side of the raven story kind of kind of okay but not really just another spin-off yeah again once again looking at the story at dif a different angle mm -hmm. mm. yeah how can I do? Mm -hmm. How else can I do this? Yeah. Um, that one art, the swimmer. I never saw that it was a fish oh. until you pointed out to me when we were in the gallery. I was like, oh, it's right in front of the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And I was oh like, yes. I never saw it until you pointed it out. Then I then I can't, of course, I see it every time now. I'm like, wow, even because I always love that print. But like <laughs> even more now that I actually understand <laughs> oh, your perspective on it. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Photo bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grace Salomone, what is your favorite art medium? What's your favorite artwork to do? That's my niece. W. Grace, my favorite medium. Uh, we can, I think it's the pencil, colored pencil. Uh, that's it. My niece also, uh, she, I have a painting of hers and it's in my favorite color in blues. Um, hey, she can paint. Uh, it's very exciting to yeah. see young people doing work too, huh? Mm-hmm. And like starting to get even better and better. It's so exciting. <laughs> um one more question on our list from again from Laurence Bernard. Ningolo, you said that you were able to sometimes achieve drawings the way you wanted them to look. Which are the ones you like the most? The ones you're most satisfied with? Well, that's such a good yeah. question. I mean, that really happens. So there's that owl it. Half of it is in brown, you know. That one I was happy with because uh, and and the Ila because I wanted to show that part of it is in shadow. So I think I achieved that in that drawing. And there's that one um Fetch University was the master printer. printer. Um <clears throat> he did he did my um, rainbow trout because I really like that one. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, yeah, I did an awesome job. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a lot about your interest in storytelling. I wonder if you've ever given any thought to doing uh, filmmaking. So making a film, a movie, documentary, or uh, animation even? 
Daddy a little bit of not a little bit. And we did we attended a five day course, I think, on animation. Uh, it was really interesting. Um and okay, I don't know if we could afford a computer. It was a five thousand dollar computer. Uh, that could, you know, be used to make animation. Um, and when I go there, I'm going to ask me so. That's a very good question. Can we make it happen? <laughs> <laughs> Heather, you're giving me ideas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to watch out for our grants. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll be at. Uh, putting out again before too long so you never know but now that people know that you're interested i i have a feeling you'll get some offers for sure yeah if anybody's other... listening and they want to give Ninga a, a, a camera please do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the other thing i was thinking about um you had mentioned the walrus that had the flowers on it i feel like so often we we you know, in Inuit art, we see a lot of animals and a lot of hunting, which are generally more male type things, but we don't have a lot about the gathering that women do. So do you have plants or, you know, that type of thing that you're interested in, in drawing as well? So berries, plants, medicines? Um. I don't know a lot. Uh, I know a little bit like Bujo Alupta mushroom is used to stop uh, heavy bleeding like on a cut. Um, did I understand that question correctly? Like, do we gather plants? Uh, use them medi medicinally oh i just i was wondering whether um you had interest in drawing flowers and plants um not in kind of okay i did i do a little bit like i did one i worries with uh you know those uh, my mom had these uh Sheets that had flowers on them, and <laughs> uh, I put that up too. So it was kind of nice. But the flower side just not as nice as everyone's. No, I love it. Thank you. Jocelyn is asking, what other artists are you inspired by or who are your favorite artists? Juana. Um, the storyteller, Amelia Chao, who's a guest of the Unica Rato Hotasima Man. Amelia Chao is a the number one inspiration for all my um, all the all the drawings that I do on uh, stories uh, made me want to learn more and read about other stories. Um, I'm Dana uh, uh, news of me. Inu sub mini inu inu sevening in nick. Did you talk to what the students of the Napachi put to book? How stories of my life? Like uh, other ones I know, you know, they depicted camp life, but uh, Napachi, she there's that one image where. A uh, woman had no say 
um, like they they would be kidnapped in it. I don't know. If the man had the parents' blessing, she'd be carried off. Uh, so she, Nepachi, she uh, drew it like it was. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the storyteller that you had heard when you were young and also Napatipudu's stories and work too. Right. Yeah. I also, I remember, I read her book a lot when I was a kid, not read, but like looked at the pictures and like, oh, was always like just fascinated by those pictures and stories of hers and that Inuit stuff could be in a book like that just amazing and that book is still really special um <clears throat> one more question from Deborah Webster what are you working on now what a good question too <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> Uh, to, uh, right now, it's blank. Uh, I have nothing right now. Um, it just kind of works out because, uh, I don't know, I need to get that sketchbook out and use it. I think taking a rest is also part of artwork too, though, right? Doing all the other activities. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Uh, uh, ang ihatiliyo ba ni man ano kana kay nakata daman for couple of weeks, maybe one week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think we have any more questions unless Heather, you had another question. <clears throat> um, maybe not so much what artworks you're working on right now, but um, I think you mentioned uh, Takalik that she was just at the AGO. Do you have any other events or art shows coming up that you know of that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, do I? No, we don't know. Mm. There's a couple not solos, but uh, probably one of you all did that, won't you? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Oh, maybe Namuna, Copenhagen. Mm. Hey. Maybe um, sometime in the future, hopefully. Maybe oh, in the next exciting. year. Daimo Vita. Daimo Lucky. So, Heather, I think we're finished our conversation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nakumik. Thank you. Nakumik. I <laughs> love